Hey boys and girls, this is lesson 2.1, and it's about square number patterns. So the guiding question that you should be thinking about while we're working on this lesson is, how can arrays help me understand square numbers? In this lesson, in this lesson sorry, you should learn, in arrays, each row and each column has the same number of objects. The product is the total number of objects within an array. Square numbers are products of a factor times itself, and arrays can help us with multiplication. Those are things that you should learn in this lesson. Here we go. So in your notebook, draw, oh, I'm sorry, on the last slide, I didn't say it, but you should have written down the name of the lesson, the number of the lesson, and today's date. So if you didn't do that already, go ahead do, and do that. And then in your notebook, I want you to draw 32 counters or dots in as many different rectangular arrays as you can. So you're making arrays with dots. How many different ones could you do? with the total being 32. When you are, have that done, go ahead and go to the next slide. So here's what I came up with. I'm sorry, they're not perfectly straight. I don't have any lines on the page to help me with that, but you get the drift of this. Pretend they're perfectly straight. So you can see um, that I could also have turned those on their end, but they would represent the same thing, right? So whether I have them going sideways across the page or vertically up and down the page, if I have the same amount of dots in those same rows, if I have the same amount of rows, I was saying, then um, it means the same whether I have it going vertically or horizontally. So um, hopefully that's what you see as well. So some key elements of rectangular arrays, things that you should notice when you look at them. You're going to want to write these things down. Each row has the same number of objects or dots. For me, it's dots because that's what I'm drawing with. We could do it with objects as well, counters if we wanted to. Each column has the same number of objects or dots. Each array has a rectangular shape. And the product is the total number of objects in the array product. That's a multiplication term. The answer in a multiplication problem is the product. Hmm. Okay, let's see where we go with that. When you have that copied down, go ahead and go to the next slide. So here I could represent these arrays by doing the dots, or I could do it with a number equation. So the dots on the top are representing 1 times 32, or I could say 32 times 1, for the second group down, I could represent it in dots, or 16 times 2, or 2 times 16, either way. And then in the bottom one, 8 times 4, or 4 times 8. So those are ways that I could um, show arrays either with drawing them out or by using a multiplication equation. Now we're going to talk about a special kind of rectangular array, and that's the square array. And the reason why that works is because we know that squares are always rectangles, but rectangles aren't always square, right? So keep that in mind. And we're going to talk about the square array right now. So you can see I've drawn a square array and we know it's a square array because it has the same amount of columns as rows. So you can see there are four rows going across the page and four columns going up and down the page. So this is a square array for the square number 16. Make sure you understand that the number a square array represents is actually a square number. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I could put a square box around that, uh, those dots. If I had drawn them perfectly lined up, you would see that it's a perfect square. <laughs> you can see that mine is not quite, but I tried. Pretty close. You get the idea. Can you make a square array for these numbers? Try and draw one beside each of those numbers in your notebook. 
see if you can do it. When you, um, you'll pause the video and when you think you're ready, turn it back on and we'll see what I came up with. So I can make a square array for the number 1 because 1 times 1 equals 1. So I have one row, one column, <laughs> and a total of 1. I can't do it for 2 because look what happens when I do that. When I try to represent 2, now I have 2 um, in a row. I have 2 columns, but I can only have 1 row. So that doesn't work. And if I try 3, I'm going to have the same problem. Whether I do it this way, I still uh, now I have one column but not enough rows, or I could have done it the other way as well. It's still the same problem. It doesn't work. But for 4, you see it does work, because I can do 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So I have 2 rows of 2 and 2 columns of 2. So that makes it a square number. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So here are some examples of square numbers. So for the first square number, we know that it is 1, because there's one dot. The second square number we know is 4. We just did this on the previous page. 2 times 2 is 4. I could add them up. I would get 4 as well, right? For the third one, 3 across by 3 down, 3 times 3 is 9. I could count them to get that. And for the fourth square number, 4 times 4, so 4 columns, 4 rows, is 16. If I counted the dots, that's what I would also get. So I want you to write down what patterns you see <clears throat> happening when you look from the first one to the second one to the third one to the fourth one. What patterns do you see? Pause this, jot some down, and then check yours on the next slide. So here's some patterns that I noticed. Square numbers are products of a factor times itself. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, right? For every consecutive square number, so the ones that are going in a row, a row and a column are added to the prior square number. I'm going to show you a visual of that screen in a second. And then starting at 1, the number of dots added to each array is always odd. For example, if I do 1 plus 3, 3 is an odd number, I get the array of 4. If I do 4, that's the two rows of two dots, and I add an odd number, 5, I'm going to get the square number, which is 9, which is 3 by 3. 9 plus the next odd number... 7 gives me 16, and that's the 4 by 4, and that will continue. So using that pattern, how many dots would be added for the next square number? 16 plus what equals what? What would you do there? You can use the next slide to give you a visual of this if you need more help. So look at how they're doing that. So you see that we had 1. I'm looking at the top row of information now. If I add 3 to it, that gives me that box. Sorry about that. Um, and you can see how that pattern continues and what that looks like. Down at the bottom is showing you how it looks doing it as a multiplication equation. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. You can see where we're going with this, right? I hope you can see the pattern. So I'm asking you in the previous slide to continue the pattern that you see up on top, but looking at what you see on the bottom should help you to know what answer you're going to be trying to get if you follow that pattern. So think about that. Pause the video if you need to. When you're ready, come back and check the next slide to see if you got it. So 16 plus 9, 9 is the one we're adding in there, 16 plus 9 equals 25. That would be 5 times 5 equals 25. Did you get that? If you don't, go back to the previous, previous few slides and try it again. Then complete page 35 in your math journal to make sure that you're understanding it. That's your practice page. If you got it right away, 
complete page 35 in your math journal so that we can see you've put it into practice on a few different problems, and we will be talking about those in the lesson tomorrow. Have a great night.